Hey there. Yeah, it's a uh, blue level dude. Uh, just uh, gonna do an update on those Windsor Junior heads and kind of tell you where we're at with those. And sorry, I didn't get to kind of show any more stuff with them. I just had to get them done and uh, get them on the flow bench. And right now they are on the engine. So yeah, um, all I can do is I can give you some updates on the numbers on them. So basically, when uh, when we're done working on them. Where we're sitting at is uh, we had gains all the way across the board compared to out of the box. And uh, at 500 thousandths, uh, we're talking 60 CFM better. And uh, up at 700, it was 69 CFM. <laughs> That's quite an improvement out of the box. And uh, on the exhaust, we're sitting at 25 CFM. At 500 thousandths and up at 7 uh, we're talking almost 50 CFM better than than it was sitting right out of the box <laughs> so it is a much better piece than what we started with so I guess that that's the idea on that um, if anyone wants to, to see you know that engine or anything or you know maybe we can take a look at that after I'm done if anyone's curious about it so what I was just going to do here is just show some of the stuff that I use uh, as, as a novice. Uh, this is just a hobby of mine. I don't get paid to do it. I just enjoy doing this and, and you know, it's just a hobby. I like doing it. So as far as cylinder head work and uh, a few other things, <clears throat> I use uh, pneumatic die grinders. This particular unit I've had for probably 22 years really I mean this thing has done a lot you know just oil your tools every day and they last a long time and uh, here's another one uh, this is a composite body die grinder <clears throat> and the way I like to use it is uh, I just use my air pressure to vary the speed of the tool um, when I'm working heavy stuff and, and uh, just need to get some metal knocked out I'll bump that PSI up to about 60 or 70 PSI and when I'm working in a little tighter areas where it's I really gotta you know uh, be careful of what I'm doing I'll knock it down to about 25 PSI you know so I can be real careful in those sensitive areas so I guess that's kind of what I do with that um, I'll show you here is this is just a set I mean you can get a lot of different but this is pretty common this is a double cut uh, carbide burr set. So these are mainly for cutting cast iron and uh, harder iron, things like that. You can, if you use them on aluminum, they're going to plug up really fast because they're just not made for aluminum. You can do some minimal stuff, but you're going to you're going to plug them up a lot. Uh, <clears throat> so that's kind of what I use for for metal. You know, I've got different ones, but this is a common set you see out there for iron. And then this will be uh, for softer metal and uh, aluminum, plastic, you know, things like that. This is a single cut carbide burr. And, uh, you know, you can dip them <clears throat> in like a grease or something or an oil. And uh, sometimes when I'm cleaning them up, what I'll do is I'll just run this in a wire brush, turn my tool on, and just run into a wire brush um, and like a bench grinder that has a wire brush on it and it'll clean a lot of that out of there, at least it works for me anyway. That's kind of something I do with that. Uh, one of the other things, right here these guys, tele telescoping gauge set. These things work great. Uh, what I'll do is is uh, when I make the port a port the way I want, I can take and set this to that height. I'll use this one for a height, and I can set that, and I can use it to make sure that I'm gauging the other ports uh, concentrically, you know, with all the rest of them. And uh, I'll use these guys for the width, so I can put it in there and set it, and make sure you know I'm keeping everything the same. And I can, um, so I can set those. 
and I can use it across the board. And uh, what I'll also do, I'll use a, digit, a digital caliper set. So I'll take one of these guys, and then I can measure this distance across here, and I can see exactly how many inches we're looking at and what that width is. So that's a couple things there. Um, I'll show you something else here in just a second. Of course, I've got a lot of different stones too that I use. This is just a couple of those. And uh, a round stone like this. Uh, what a guy wants to do with this is what I like to do or is uh, use this right on the valve seat area on the last cut on that valve seat. So I can show you real quick, just in a minute here. But to round that off and to smooth out that transition, this works great for that. So you can cut your speedway down, stick in your die grinder, and be very, very careful and work that and round that edge off on that last seat angle. Uh, just another a, another different stone that I use. Sometimes uh, if I get an intake port too smooth, I'll just use a stone to put some roughness back in it. Something that I did early on was make make an intake port too smooth, and then that fuel, and especially in a carbureted application, wants to puddle up, and it just can cause you all kinds of problems. So sometimes if it gets too smooth on that intake side, I'll add a little roughness. Uh, that fuel needs to stick to the side of that port. You know, so if you're going at low speed, it's got low velocity, you're not using a lot of throttle, it can kind of stick to the edges of that port. So when you hit that throttle, and it's going to pull it off from the edges, so it's not going to be pulling up and making puddles inside of that port. Uh, another thing, I usually do finish up work. Uh, this is just a cheap set from Harbor Freight. Um, if, you're, <laughs> if you're in a pinch and you're like, man, I can't get some like right now and I need to get this job done, I'll stop and grab some there. They do work fairly well. I found that the, the little arbors, they definitely aren't as strong as the quality one. Uh, the sanding discs, or cartridges, sorry, they don't tend to last as long as a higher quality one, like a, a standard abrasives, I think it was, as I've used that brand before. And yeah, they tend to last longer, so you will get longer life out of those cartridges. But hey, these do work. Of course, when I'm working on stuff, whether it be cylinder heads or a block or whatever, safety glasses, you do not want to make a trip to the eye doctor to get something pulled out of your eye. <clears throat> I wear hearing protection. And if I'm using cartridge rolls, sanding rolls, I'm working with dirty casting, wear a mask. Wear a mask, you'll not be sorry. And uh, <laughs> just so I can jam out to some tunes when I'm wearing my ear protection, I just throw these right under there. And it actually works pretty good. So you can listen to some music and just kind of jam out and get in the zone when I'm doing it. So yeah, that's just a couple things I use for that. So I'll set this, uh, this uh, off to the side. And I'll kind of just show you quick what I was talking about with that round uh, stone right there. So for example, This round stone you can get down in here and very carefully you can use it right around this area and then you can kind of just rock it just gently and change that angle you gotta be real careful when you do this not to over overdo it or nick a seat that's the last thing you want to do so you don't have to you know have them remachined definitely wouldn't be fun to have to send it 
out to the shop because you just got a little too excited. <laughs> so that's uh, I don't know if that'll help any of you guys out, but that's just kind of what I do and what has worked for me. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good day. Thanks.